welcome i'm so glad you are here thank you so much for subscribing to our channel and following our journey um as you can as you can see <laughs> i'm not fully dressed yet i still gotta do my hair and stuff and um uh i have to get my son on the bus um which it's almost time i have some water boiling back here to go in my teapot which is right there <laughs> The white one right here um and i'm gonna be making some tea i'm gonna finish getting ready after i put my son on the bus bring you guys to my appointment uh i'm not sure if they're gonna allow the camera in there so i'm going to try and um record on my phone if so uh, because i know with this big camera they're not gonna they're gonna be like girl no uh, <laughs> so um yeah that's what i'm gonna do um I also want to say thank you for Sade. Sade is another YouTuber. She's been shouting out my channel. She is also on a TTC journey. Um, and so, um, well, I, you know, I was on a TC, T, uh, TTC journey as well. In July, I did mi miscarry. Um, and, you know, here we are today. I am... Uh, we are expecting uh, so it was you know a very hard journey I you know infertility problems for years and 10 years and 12 years and I can't even imagine um, so my heart goes out to you guys I really hope you guys get your BFP I am so sorry for the focusing problem here I have no idea what's going on um, I'll try and fix it here but um yes i want to thank you so much uh for tuning in uh, on this channel um and let's encourage each other and keep the day going so it is 801 i'm actually going to turn off that water because um my daughter is asleep in her room and i don't want to leave this on that would not be very smart so i'm going to turn that off we're going to first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh we're gonna take my son easy uh downstairs so he could get on his bus and um we'll go from there easy come on it's time to go oh uh, sorry i have to go i have to go for your school say hi I'll go. I had to go to school. So you have to go to school? Yep, I had to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, turn off all your, turn off all your gadgets, your TV, your light, get your backpack, your mask. Because mm -hmm. we still wear a mask here. Yes, we do. We are going to stay safe. I remember you putting it over there. It's on your chair over there. Here? It's right, your mask. Oh. <laughs> oh, I did thinking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys. Okay, so I'm going to put you guys back on the tripod. So I have free hands. Okay. So now I have my notes here. I'm going to turn back on the water. And uh, I guess I'll have some. I'll have some cinnamon tea today. That sounds really good. Really uh, freaking out about my appointment today. So just to make time go by today as well, I'm also going to be getting out of the house. Um, and I'll bring you guys along. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do just yet. But um, yeah, um, we, we got to get out of the house <laughs> to kill some time. Uh, my husband is going to come to the appointment and our daughter has to come with us as well because she's not in school yet. But I'm not sure if they're going to let my husband into the appointment 
because of COVID going on. And that's going to really suck because I really want him to be in there. But we'll see. I guess we'll just see what happens. Um, first case scenario, he's going to have to watch our daughter in the waiting room. I'm going to have to go in and I'm going to try and record even for him to see the video uh, with him. He's just like, oh, you know, a picture is, you know, good for me. And I'm just like, uh, no, I would want to see the video. I would, hey, can you record something? I, that That's me. I don't know, maybe maybe it's just me. Comment down below if you're that type where you have to feel like you were there. Like, I that's me. I have to be like, hey, get as much footage as you can. Try and record. Uh, record what the doctor says if she lets you. Like, I want to know everything as if I was in the appointment. So, we'll see what goes on with, there, uh, with that. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop chattering my lips. <laughs> My water is boiling over here. I'm going to uh, brew up some tea and then I'm going to um, make some breakfast. So I will come back to you guys when I'm done with that. I'm back so I'm ready for my appointment I just got to do my daughter's hair I'm just gonna throw it up because she is fighting me this morning um, so yeah I am ready I just did something to my hair a little bit um, I'm not gonna do my makeup because I feel like that's just too much for today um, I went to the bathroom and I'm spotting so 
and I'm just I don't know what this appointment is gonna be but we shall see um, it may just be nothing I don't know um, when I had my uh, before I had my miscarriage I was uh, I had the same thing except with that that um, pregnancy I did have a subchorionic hemorrhage which I didn't know about um, or hematoma however you want to say it um, so, and I don't know if that contributed to the miscarriage or, um, or what, but the, my doctor did say that, you know, with the, <laughs> with the, um, uh, last pregnancy that it was, uh, just abnormalities. It, you know, it, it's nothing I did or my husband did or anything like that. Um, it's just the you know the baby didn't have all of its chromosomes or whatever it needed to develop correctly um so we shall see what this appointment's about um i'm gonna do my daughter's hair and we're gonna get out and the next time you guys probably see me it'll probably be um when i'm uh in the doctor's office or um maybe i will um record us just driving around killing some time until the appointment i haven't decided yet but until then i'll see you guys um uh at my appointment I just can't see a, a fetal pole right now. So, obviously not good news, but it's possible not a, um, it's possible not a viable pregnancy, um, um, it's a rare, um, um, condition, she says, called a molar pregnancy, and, um, I'll put in here what she's talking about, um, but she's saying basically, like, they're gonna have to do it, DNC, to cancel the pregnancy, and... We wouldn't be able to try for 6 to 12 months, so there's that. Um, she wants to do a follow-up in two weeks or on the 13th, another ultrasound, um, to see, um, you know, 
if they can find a baby uh, and if not you know she did some blood work as well um, so you know um, if she, when she gets the blood work back um, we should get, get it by Monday when she gets it back then she'll um, give us more of a clear answer of what's going on um, but yeah, um, I recorded, I voice recorded, um, our conversation, so you guys will get to hear that, um, more of what she's saying, um, hopefully you guys can hear her, um, but yeah, I'm just, I knew something wasn't right, I wasn't getting any symptoms that, you know, I'm six, um, supposedly supposed to be six weeks and six days, and, um, according to the first day of my last cycle, and I just was not experiencing any pregnancy symptoms, so, um, I knew something wasn't right with that, um, I just don't know, I don't know, I'm trying to reach for tissue because I grabbed some before I left, I just don't know you guys, I guess we'll just see what she says um sorry about the lighting i guess we'll just see what she says whenever the blood work comes back um yeah we'll just see what she says but again like obviously not good news uh, just keep us in your prayers you guys and we'll just we'll just go from there anything with you so far about the no, ultrasound no. or what we found okay um so on the ultrasound unfortunately we are not seeing a baby right okay with a heartbeat today now what was the first day of your last period october 15th october 15th and you're positive about that yeah mm -hmm. okay okay um so still pretty early okay for that uh due date but my concern is that what we are seeing on the ultrasound is that like a strange mass within the uterus Okay, um, so my very, very strong suspicion is that this is not a normal pregnancy, okay? okay? My concern is actually that this isn't just like a miscarriage, but this is actually potentially something that's called a molar pregnancy, which is pretty rare, okay? okay. Um, but it's something that can sometimes even turn into a cancer if it's not monitored really closely, okay? okay. Um, so I'm not saying you have cancer, to be clear, okay. okay, at all. I'm not even positive it's a molar pregnancy. The only way for us to absolutely know for sure is to send tissue to a pathologist for evaluation. But okay. within your uterus, it just looks like there's a bunch of tissue mm -hmm. and no actual pregnancy or baby or gestational sac or yolk sac or any of the things that we would typically see around this point. Okay? Right. Um, now, if you want to be sure, you're a super cute kiddo. Um, so if you want to be sure, what we could do is we could repeat another ultrasound in like a week or two and that would give us like a, a more firm idea okay it's not just that we're really early and that we're seeing some strange thing that's unexplainable um sometimes when there is a molar pregnancy we can have a baby end the molar pregnancy okay so that's rare but that does sometimes happen okay. um so we could repeat another ultrasound in a week or two my concern is that the longer we wait the longer we're getting it time to evolve and develop which can potentially cause more complications for you okay, okay. Um, it does that explain why I'm not having any symptoms at this point? We're not having any pregnancy symptoms, so you're not having any. So actually, with the molar pregnancy, usually your pregnancy hormone levels are exceedingly high, very, very, very high, because it's okay. oftentimes made of um, pregnancy tissue that just isn't actually a baby. Right. Okay? Like I've had like tender nipples and uh, occasional nausea, which I wouldn't really even call nausea. Okay. Um, but that's it. But that's like it. I haven't had any like um, major nausea, throwing up, uh, major sore boobs or anything. And that honestly leads me to think that maybe it's not a molar pregnancy. Okay, which would be a good thing. Yeah. Um, but you don't always have very high um, pregnancy hormone levels with it, so it's just hard to say because there are two different kind of classes of molar pregnancy. Okay. One of them is associated with really, really, really high levels. Um, mm -hmm. And again, it's still really early in the gestation, so it's still hard to totally tell. And then one um, is not as associated with that. Okay. So um, what would explain, like, 
the positive pregnancy test. So, um, it, like is a preg term. it is a pregnancy condition. So yeah. it's a pregnancy condition. It's associated with pregnancy hormone levels, okay? Yeah. So definitely um, women who have this condition, um, molar pregnancy, which is uh, also called like gestational neoplasia or gestational trophoblastic disease, um, it's associated with positive pregnancy tests for sure. And so okay. when we do your blood work today, we'll also be looking for an actual number, numerical value of your pregnancy hormone level. Okay. So it is associated with a pregnancy with an egg and a sperm meeting, or sometimes two eggs and a, and a um, sperm, or sometimes two sperm and an egg, actually. It's kind of weird that way. Okay. okay. Um, so definitely that's what's explaining the positive pregnancy test. Okay. You need an ultrasound to be absolutely sure that there's not like a healthy pregnancy lurking around in there. But okay. we are definitely not seeing any signs of that today. And what I am seeing is concerning. Okay. Okay. Um, what I, what I would recommend doing is let's get some blood work today, okay? okay? And then based off of the blood work, I'll be able to point you in a better direction once I see those results, okay? okay? Does okay. that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, this is not the news I wanted to give you. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of knew something was up even when I wasn't um, uh, experiencing, like getting those hormone, like pregnancy hormones or, you know. Because you've been spotting. Well, I mean, even with the spotting, it like it's like brown and then a little tinge of bright red and then it goes away. But that's only, I only get the bright red when I'm like constipated okay. and then it goes away. Okay. And then I only have like the, the dark brown uh, discharge coming out when I urinate. Okay. Um, like I passed like maybe that bit of um, discharge today, uh, dark, dark blood. Okay. Um, but it wasn't anything like like with my miscarriage in July, like yeah. it wasn't like ma like massive right, red or amounts. something. Yeah, vaginal bleeding is not uncommon with yeah. this condition. It actually is very commonly associated with um, a molar pregnancy, if that's even what it is. Okay. Okay. Now, usually with a if that's what I think it is, which is what I'm leaning towards. But I, again, I could be wrong, and I hope I am wrong. Okay. Yeah. Um, the recommendation is not to watch, wait, and see. It's not to give you a medication to pass things. It would be to definitely do a DNC. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think we should at least, once I get the results back, if it's really pointing in this direction, I think we should get something scheduled sooner than later, okay? If you really don't feel comfortable and you want to wait another two weeks, that's likely safe, okay? Okay. Um, but I wouldn't want to wait more than that, okay? So if you really want to wait two more weeks, get another ultrasound just to confirm, I think that's reasonable, but I would say we should just go ahead and schedule a DNC to follow, and if something changes on that ultrasound, great, we cancel it, but at least we have it on the books. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, so at sorry. this point, it's not a viable pregnancy. At this point, my very strong suspicion is it's not a viable pregnancy, and it might be not just like a miscarriage pregnancy, not like an empty sac pregnancy, but actually yeah. potentially like a, a concerning rare type of pregnancy that's called a molar pregnancy. Molar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where things just don't develop right and potentially can turn into a cancerous process. So if if it pathology were to confirm that, and I'll walk you through this if that's what happens, but basically um, it would require kind of a lot of follow-up initially with like repeat hormone levels for a while until okay. we can make sure that levels are trending down and not trending up because okay. that's a sign that things are improving and not that things are worsening or turning into something like a cancer. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. My nose is not at all. She wrote my nose. I'm carrying mm -hmm. so my nose is super emotionally draining. Okay. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. You sure? I know. I was so excited to see you today. This is not the news I wanted to give you. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I'm going to walk you through it all. We're going to figure it out, okay? And this does not mean that you can't have another baby. I know you've been wanting one for a while now, okay? This does not mean that. You know, if we confirm this diagnosis, we usually recommend waiting 6 to 12 months before conceiving again and getting on birth control and really being strict about it. And we'll talk about that, okay? Okay. Um, but this does not, by any means, way, shape, or form, mean that you cannot have a baby healthy pregnancy at some point. I know you've kind of gotten the raw end of the deal these last two pregnancies, okay? Yeah. But still you've got a bunch of healthy kids too, mm -hmm. and I think that the most likely outcome with the next pregnancy would be a healthy baby, even though right. I know it probably doesn't feel that way right now, okay? Yeah. Um, there you go, sweetie. Is it okay if I do a speculum exam today? Or yeah, that's today? fine. Is that okay? Sometimes, rarely, um, this can be associated with like an abnormal growth in the cervix region, and I just want to make sure that I don't see anything concerning going on. Okay. Is that okay? In a week, in two weeks. So two 14 weeks. days about. Okay. okay. No more than 14 days though. Okay. okay. And then we'll do an ultrasound at that visit, so we'll schedule an ultrasound then. If something comes back in your blood work that drastically concerns me more, then we might change the plan, but let's just make that the plan for now, okay? Mm -hmm. 
and then I'm gonna just tentatively schedule surgery for you after that ultrasound just so we have something on the books, okay? Mm -hmm. If we decide on doing surgery, um, is that painful? So you're under anesthesia, so you're asleep the whole time. So oh, okay. pain. You'll have no cramping afterwards, but nothing that a little bit of pain medication will help. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if you have heavy bleeding, no, you need to come in right away. Okay, between okay. now and then. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then typically, I uh, prefer to have an X-ray, a chest X-ray as well before the surgery. Whenever we're worried about a molar pregnancy, just because sometimes um, if it is a molar pregnancy, um, there can be like metastases in the lungs already. Okay, and so that's something that we would want to look for first. Okay. Okay. Um, so we can order that. To, we could try to get that done after. Like I'll order it today, so we can maybe schedule it after your ultrasound. And then if we decide from the ultrasound, no, wait, we're not going ahead with surgery. We would cancel it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. We'll schedule it between the ultrasound and potential surgery. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the surgery, will she be able to drive back home, or am I going to need to? No. Okay, so I'll, yeah, I'll take the day off. She would need someone to drive her to and from. Okay. Yeah, she would be asleep. I'll be under anesthesia. Under anesthesia. anesthesia. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so today's like a what? So just, this is, I'll give you like a timeline. So say we're, you're following up with me. At this point, you're following up with me in two weeks. So on the 15th of December. So probably, um, maybe even come in and see me like on the 13th, honestly. Yeah. And then we, I would probably plan on scheduling surgery like on the 15th. Yeah. With plans for the chest x-ray like later in the day on the 13th or the 14th, mm -hmm. something like that, okay? Right. okay? Okay, questions for me? Uh, I don't know, <laughs> I, don't, I guess I don't have any. Okay. Oh, um, I do. So, um, you said if I do have like bleeding or whatever to come see you, would that be like, um, go straight to the ER? So if you're soaking through a pad an hour, or a pad every two hours for multiple hours in a row, you need to go to the ER. Okay. okay. Otherwise, if the bleeding picks up, call our office and we'll see you here in the office. Okay. Okay. But again, I want to see you no later than the 13th for your follow-up ultrasound. Okay. okay. So even if you wanted to come in at the end of next week instead or something like that, I think that would be reasonable. Okay. okay. I don't want to wait on this too long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Me either. Yeah. <laughs> I just you know, hope things turn around. Yes, yay. Questions for me. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I guess we'll just see what you say. Okay. Yeah. Well,